Okay, the previous uh, class we have seen the dipole-dipole interaction and uh, how that uh, one dipole molecule is attracting the other dipole molecule and uh, what is the reason behind the development of a dipole in a molecule. All these things we discussed earlier. And uh, fundamentally, you have to understand what is electronegativity. That is the basis of uh, this discussion. Electronegativity is the capacity of an atom to attract the shared pair of electrons towards itself in a covalent molecule. This electronegativity is a periodic property. If you move from left to right in the periodic table, electronegativity increases. And if you move down the group, electronegativity decreases. Say for example, um, sodium, or lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, the alkali metals, they show very little electronegativity. But at the same time, the fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine, they show higher electronegativity. And if you compare the halogens, so the electronegativities of the halogens, fluorine is a highly electronegative, whereas the chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine, they show less electronegativity. Therefore, in the periodic table, electronegativity decreases down the group and it increases along the period. Now, my dear uh, student friends, actually, I am uh, teaching through the Zoom application, which is an intro application. Therefore, in uh, 40 minutes, the class will be cut off. If it is cut off, uh, please uh, re-enter in the same uh, link with the same passcode so that you can be uh, you can be able to join the class again for another 20 minutes. Therefore, in the first 40 minutes, sometimes the Zoom application allows us to teach for any longer time. Sometimes it gets deactivated in the first 40 minutes. If the, the, if the class is get cut at the 40th minute, I request all the students to re-enter through the same link and the same passcode again so that we can discuss a little more for another 20 minutes. Is it sure? Right. Now I'm going to present a few preparations. Watch closely. So now, so this is what the slide that we have uh, seen in the last class. A multi-atomic molecule may be polar or may not be polar. The polar nature or the non-polar nature of a multi-atomic molecules, it depends upon three important factors, namely the arrangement of atoms, the bond length, and the bond angle. In general, I can tell you the polarity mostly depends upon the symmetry of the molecule. And I have already told you when I teach you the physical chemistry to the group theory, there I will discuss the relation between the symmetry and the dipole moment. And the carbon dioxide molecule is having polar bonds, but as a whole, the molecule is a non-polar due to its a linear symmetry. And also carbon disulfide, but water molecule has permanent dipole moment. It has dipole nature because of its bent shape. Similarly, sulfur dioxide, ammonia, and also methyl chloride, and all these things we have seen earlier. I think you are all very thorough with this understanding. If you simply go through what I have presented, and if you listen to what I am telling you, you can very easily understand that uh, the dipole moment mainly depends upon the shape and the electronegativity difference. The mere electronegativity difference alone cannot impute a dipole moment on the molecule. It may cause a bond to be polar, but as a whole, whether the molecule is uh, polar or non-polar, that depends upon the symmetry also. Therefore, if you take the ammonia molecule, if ammonia molecule were triangular planar like boron trifluoride molecule certainly ammonia will be a non-polar molecule but ammonia possesses a permanent dipole moment and it is a polar molecule 
because of the lone pair present on the nitrogen with which repels the bond pair therefore what happens because of the lone pair bond pair repulsion the nh bonds are bent that is why the ammonia assumes a pyramidal shape the configuration the pyramid the shape of the nitrogen molecule is a pyramidal whereas the shape of boron trifluoride molecule is trigonal planar as it is in a planar shape what will happen the vectorial sum of all the dipole natures of the three bonds will cancel out each other and finally the boron trifluoride molecule will have the the, the dipole moment is zero but ammonia as it is having a bent structure and in the pyramidal shape the vectorial sum of the dipole vectors of nh bonds when they are added together that results in a resultant vector which is uh, pointing towards the nitrogen that is how the nitrogen the ammonia molecule has a permanent uh, dipole moment therefore symmetry plays a vital role now look here this is a very important uh, uh, thing you should learn in chemistry when a molecule is formed where one of the atoms is a hydrogen and the other one is fluorine oxygen or nitrogen you don't uh, be misguided by the picture what i have shown in the first line hydrogen dash i put a empty circle that empty circle means either fluorine or oxygen or nitrogen you can can remember like this fon f o n if a hydrogen is a part of the molecule and the other atom which is attached to hydrogen is a fluorine or oxygen or nitrogen then what will happen because of the electronegativity difference the hydrogen will be having a partial positive charge and the fluorine will have a partial negative charge therefore the hydrogen fluoride molecule becomes a dipole molecule it's a dipole it's a dipole now what will happen these dipoles will try to associate themselves as shown below this is called the association of the hydrogen fluoride molecule this association will continue to continue infinitely therefore hydrogen the solid line indicates a covalent bond between hydrogen and fluorine and the other hydrogen comes here with a solid covalent bond between the hydrogen and the fluorine now what happens this hydrogen possesses a partial positive charge this fluorine possesses a partial negative charge therefore there is an attraction between the partial positive charge of this hydrogen and the partial negative charge negative charge of this fluorine and there exists a weak attraction between the molecules these dotted lines indicate a bonding a weak attraction or a weak bonding between the fluorine of one molecule and the hydrogen of the other molecule therefore this dotted line is nothing but the hydrogen bonding therefore the attractive force which binds hydrogen from one molecule try to understand the definition thoroughly the attractive force which binds hydrogen from one molecule with electronegative atom such as fluorine oxygen nitrogen of another molecule of the same substance is known as a hydrogen bonding that should be of the same substance that is called the hydrogen bonding actually hydrogen bonding is a possible between different substances also suppose if you mix alcohol and the water there will be hydrogen bonding between the alcohol molecule and the water molecule but we cannot define that as the hydrogen bonding because hydrogen bonding in one substance should have one particular length and one particular energy and all that therefore if you take a hydrogen fluoride molecule as a whole what will happen it is the attractive force which binds hydrogen from one molecule with electron negative atoms such as 
chlorine, oxygen and nitrogen of another molecule of the same substance is known as a hydrogen bond. So this is the hydrogen bond. Normally hydrogen bond is mentioned as dotted lines, whereas solid lines indicate the covalent bond. So the this bond between hydrogen and the fluorine is a covalent, whereas this bond between the fluorine and the hydrogen is a hydrogen bond. So similarly, you can assume hydrogen atom is a functioning as a bridge between two fluorine atoms of different molecules. So look here, here is a fluorine and here is a fluorine. In between these two fluorine atoms, this hydrogen is working as a bridge where it is connected to one fluorine through covalent bond and it is connected to the other fluorine by hydrogen bond. Therefore, a hydrogen on one side it is connected to fluorine through covalent bond and on the other side it is connected to fluorine through hydrogen bond and this is how the hydrogen atom is a functioning as a bridge between two, fluor two fluorine atoms. Now look here, if you, I have already told you the periodic trend of uh, the electronegativity. When you move down the group, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So among these uh, halogens, fluorine is uh, found to be more electronegative and the chlorine is uh, found to be comparatively less electronegative and the bromine is much less and iodine is the least because when you move down the group in the periodic table the electronegativity decreases therefore but all these halogens they have the tendency to combine with the hydrogen to form uh, hydrogen fluoride hydrogen chloride hydrogen bromide and hydrogen iodide it is possible but the tendency to form hydrogen bond is more for hydrogen fluoride and it is less for the other halogens. So hydrogen fluoride forms hydrogen bonding between HF molecules, but HCl and HPr and HI, they show less tendency to form hydrogen bond because of the less electronegativity of chlorine, bromine and iodine. Because in these uh, cases, the shared pair of electrons are not uh, attracted towards the halogen very effectively. They are almost found in the middle. But in the hydrogen fluoride, they move to a greater extent towards the fluorine. Therefore, the charge separation is much pronounced in the case of hydrogen fluoride. But it is seen comparatively less in the case of chlorine, bromine, and iodine. So, you can see this compound of formation, KHF2. Actually, the KHF2, this molecule is existing in this form, HF2 minus and K plus. HF2 minus will be acting as a radical. No, it, it is a, a separate entity and whose structure is like this. See, look at this a fluorine, fluorine with the two electrons here and the two electrons here, and two electrons here, and two electrons here. So the octet of this fluorine is a complete. Whereas this hydrogen has two electrons here, and two electron here, two electron here, two electron here. And this fluorine, the octet, sorry. And this fluorine also, the octet is a complete. And for this hydrogen, the duplet is also complete. But as a whole, it possesses a negative charge. Therefore, this entire entity is existing as an ion uh, with a negative charge. So with this, the potassium plus gets connected. So because of the high electronegative nature of the fluorine, the compound KHF2 is a possible only for fluorine. Whereas KHCl2 or KHBr2 or KHI2, these molecules are not possible. It is because of the high electronegativity of the fluorine. So with this, uh, we understand the hydrogen bonding, it is the attractive force which binds the hydrogen atom from one molecule with the electronegative atom 
such as fluorine, oxygen, and the nitrogen of another molecule of the same substance. And this hydrogen bonding forming tendency is more found in the case of hydrogen fluoride, and it is the tendency is found to be less in the case of hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen bromide, and hydrogen iodide. So the high electronegativity nature of a fluorine is also seen in the compound formation KHF2. And I have already explained this. There is a KHCl2, KHBr2, and the KHI2 compounds are not possible. So the dipole molecules using the hydrogen bonding they will associate and they will form a big association of infinite number of molecules. Next, look here. Even water molecule also shows hydrogen bonding. So this is a water molecule. And I have already told you the water molecule is of bent shape. And because of the bent shape of the water molecule, water molecule has a permanent dipole moment. If water is a linear one, it may not have the dipole moment. May not have the dipole moment. So now what happens? See, this oxygen, it has a partial negative charge. This hydrogen has a partial positive charge. And this hydrogen also has a, a partial positive charge. Therefore, what happens? There is an attraction between the partial negative charge of this oxygen and the partial positive charge of this hydrogen. So these uh, dotted lines the dotted line indicates the presence of hydrogen bonding. And also, it continues between this oxygen and this hydrogen, and this oxygen and this hydrogen. Actually, this is a three-dimensional structure. The oxygen will be bonded through hydrogen bond to several hydrogens. Even this hydrogen will have attraction towards an oxygen over here. In order to understand uh, Simply, I have written the one-dimensional structure. Actually, all the oxygens are oriented towards hydrogen and all the hydrogens are oriented towards oxygen in a bulk substance. Similarly, alcohols, see, R, R can be either CH3 or C2H5 or anything. Even alcohols have hydrogen bonding. So, there is an attraction between this oxygen and this hydrogen. And this oxygen is delta minus, and this hydrogen is delta plus. Again, okay? the bonding continues. But in the case of carboxylic acids, look at the carboxylic acids R C O O H. R C O O H. Here, the C double bond O, this O has a partial negative charge, whereas C O H. This H has a partial positive charge. Therefore, what happens? One carboxylic molecule has one side OH and the other side double bond O. And the other carboxylic acid molecule has one side double bond O and the other side OH. Therefore, what happens? Two molecules will form a cluster like. This is called a dimer. This is a dimer. See, dimer means two molecules getting associated and existing together. This is a dimer. Therefore, there is a hydrogen bonding between this hydrogen and oxygen. And here is a hydrogen bonding between this hydrogen and the oxygen. Therefore, carboxylic acids normally exist in the form of dimer. Actually, there is an interesting story. There is an interesting story. Look here. Uh, first, people tried to find out the molecular uh, weight of substances, molecular weight of substances using colligative property. You might have studied what is a colligative property in physical chemistry. 
Colligative property means the property which depends upon the number of particles present in a solvent. Say for example, the elevation of a boiling point. Normally water boils at 100 degrees centigrade, but if you add some non-volatile substance, automatically the boiling point will increase. And also the freezing point. Freezing point will depress when the substances are added. So the colligative property depends upon the number of particles. So when first people tried to find out the molecular weight of acetic acid using colligative properties, that is cryoscopic method. Cryoscopic method means by knowing the depression in the freezing point, people found out the molecular weight of substances. So, the molecular weight of the substance calculated using cryoscopic method. It proved that the acetic acid molecule is existing as a dimer because the molecular weight calculated by cryoscopic method was double that of the molecular weight of actual acetic acid. Therefore, what people uh, expected, normally the acetic acid molecular weight is some quantity, but the molecular weight of the acetic acid calculated using cryoscopic method is a double that of the molecular weight of acetic acid. And then only people came to know that the acetic acid molecule is getting associated. Two molecules of acetic acid get associated to form a dimer. And this is how the hydrogen bonding was found. So, the hydrogen bonding in the case of carboxylic acids, it is forming a dimer like this. Whereas water molecules, they are linear. Actually, it is a three-dimensional structure. Uh, and also alcohol, alcohol hydrogen bonding is uh, found in alcohols also. Therefore, the carboxylic acids, they present in the form of a dimer. Now, the strength of hydrogen bonding is a 3 to 10 kilocalorie per mole. If you compare the strength of covalent bond with a hydrogen bond, the covalent bond strength is of the order of 100 kilocalorie per mole, whereas the strength of a hydrogen bond is from 3 to 10 kilocalorie per mole. Therefore, this shows that hydrogen bond is a very weak bond comparing covalent bond. That is why when you boil the substances, suppose you are boiling what you are boiling water, the water molecules escape in the form of vapor because of the breaking of a hydrogen bond. So hydrogen bonds can be easily broken because the bond strength is some um, 3 to 10 kilocalorie per mole. But breaking a covalent bond is uh, not that much possible because the strength is 100 kilocalorie per mole. So hydrogen bond is a weak bond connecting hydrogen of one molecule and the electronegative atom of the other molecule. Now, There are two types of hydrogen bonds. One is called intramolecular hydrogen bond. What is intramolecular? Intra, intra means within. Suppose we are having aircraft connecting Chennai to Delhi or Delhi to Mumbai or Mumbai to Calcutta. This is called the intranational airways or intranational uh, aeroplanes. Intra. Intra means within. International means between nations. Similarly, intramolecular hydrogen bonding means a hydrogen bonding existing within the molecule, in the same molecule. Look here. This is orthonitrophenol. This orthonitrophenol Orthonitrophenol has nitrogen 
bonded oxygen and this oxygen is a highly electronegative and it has a delta minus a charge and here the phenolic group in the ortho position it has oxygen and connected hydrogen actually this oxygen is highly electronegative and it attracts the shared pair of electrons towards itself therefore hydrogen possesses a partial positive charge therefore the partial positive charge on the hydrogen in the phenolic group in this position and the oxygen in the nitro group in the ortho position there exists a hydrogen bond between the hydrogen and the oxygen so this bond is found within this molecule so the meeting will end in another 10 minutes please re-enter okay so this bond is established between two groups present in the same molecule so this is called intramolecular hydrogen bond similarly ortho chlorophenol ortho chlorophenol look here the chlorine is electronegative it has a delta minus charge and the phenolic group oh this has a delta positive charge and there is an attraction between the hydrogen and the chlorine therefore what happens there is a hydrogen bond it is called intramolecular hydrogen bond and because of this intramolecular hydrogen bond this molecule will not attract other molecule because the hydrogen bond is existing within the molecule itself that is why these substances are more volatile they are more volatile because of the intramolecular hydrogen bond if you look at the intermolecular hydrogen bond it is the hydrogen bond existing between the different molecules of the same type you take for example para nitrophenol the nitro group is in the para position and the phenol and the nitro group they are para to each other therefore what happens this nitrogen has oxygen which has a partial negative charge and it is this oxygen is uh, attracted towards the hydrogen of the phenolic group present in the other molecule which has a delta positive charge and the dotted lines indicate dotted lines indicate the presence of hydrogen bond between these two molecules therefore this hydrogen bond connects various other molecules therefore what happens because of the intra intermolecular hydrogen bonding they show high boiling point similarly para chlorobenzene sorry para chlorophenol see the chlorine atom is here whereas the hydrogen atom is present in the other molecule so there is an attraction between this chlorine and the hydrogen and because of the intermolecular hydrogen bonding they show high boiling point that is why the steam uh, separation of the compounds using the steam distillation the ortho nitrophenol is easily volatile with a steam whereas a para nitrophenol is not possible therefore if you have a mixture of ortho nitrophenol and para nitrophenol they can be easily separated by the steam distillation so this distillation is possible because of the inter and the intra molecular hydrogen bonding so the hydrogen bond it shows a remarkable effect in the boiling point look at this there's a page from the purian sharma book see nitrogen phosphorus arsenic antimony all combined with the hydrogen but look at the molecular weight 17 34 78 125 but look at the boiling point it is minus 33 minus 84 uh, minus 55 minus 17. see the boiling point is not showing any linear dependency with the molecular weight similarly you look at the sixth group of metals hydrogen water oxygen sulfur selenium tellurium even here also the molecular weight goes on increasing but look at the boiling point it is not following the trend 
And look at the hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen chloride, hydrogen bromide, and hydrogen iodide. Even here also, the boiling point shows a different trend with the molecular weight. So when it is graphically represented as shown below, look at this. There is no linear change with the boil uh, with the boiling point. See, ammonia is higher, and it decreases with the pH three. Again, increases with arsenic and then antimony similarly water is the highest and it decreases with uh, hydrogen sulfide again increases and again increases actually this uh, change is because of the hydrogen bonding existing between the molecules so water has hydrogen bonding hydrogen fluoride has hydrogen bonding ammonia has hydrogen bonding that is why they show a little bit higher boiling point and also uh, you can uh, see the changes in the boiling point of the various molecules. So, I suppose in another four minutes it will be cut off, and I request all of you to reconnect.